Today we're finding the zeros of a quadratic function. Our function is f of x equals 3x squared plus 3x minus 18. When the problem asks to find the zeros of a function, you need to set the function equal to zero. It is wanting you to find the x value when the y value is zero. In order to do that, we are going to set this function equal to zero. So we have 3x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals zero. Now we have a quadratic equation that we can solve. The first step in solving this quadratic equation is to factor the left side. Because the left side is a trinomial, we can factor this using the process of grouping. We're going to bring down the first term, 3x squared, add two blanks, and bring down the last term, negative 18, and this will still be equal to zero. Our next step is to multiply a times c. Our a is three, our c is negative 18. So a times c is going to be three times negative 18. That will give us negative 54. Now we need to find the factors of negative 54 that multiply to give me negative 54 and add to give me b. b in our problem is 3x. So what are our factors of negative 54 that would multiply to give me negative 54 and add to give me 3? Let's list the factors of just 54. We can take care of the signs later. We have 1 and 54. 2 and 27, 3 and 18, 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, but then we have 6 and 9. And we know to stop with this because if I was to keep going, I would have 9 times 6 and that would be basically starting over. All right, which one of these sets of factors is going to give me three. Now we do need to take into consideration that the 54 is negative. That means that one of these factors must also be negative in order to multiply to give that negative 54. If we look at each of these combinations, we can see that um, none of these are going to add to give me three except for six and nine. So let's go ahead and put these numbers in the blank. And remember, we're wanting these two middle terms to add to 3x, so we do need to put an x there with it. We have 6x in the first blank and 9x in the second blank. We still haven't taken into consideration the signs, though. What do the signs need to be in order to get a positive 3x but still have a negative 54? So... I have a positive 3x, my bigger number is 9, that number also needs to be positive, which then means my 6 here would be negative. Many students ask me, does it matter the order of these two numbers in the blanks? Could I write 9x first and then negative 6x? And the answer to that is yes. Um, you can absolutely put it in any order as long as the sign stays with the appropriate term. So you would not want to write negative 9x and then positive 6x. You would want to make sure the sign stayed with it. Now that we have four terms on the left side, we want to continue our process of grouping. So the next step of grouping is to group the first two terms and the second two terms. So our first two terms will be grouped together and our last two terms on the left side are also grouped together. The next step is to factor out the greatest common factor in each group. The greatest common factor in the first group would be 3x. If I place the 3x out in front of that factor, then I also have to divide each of these terms inside that by 3x as well. This is how we make this mathematically correct. So we're really not changing anything mathematically. This is still equivalent. Um, but we are going ahead and addressing that greatest common factor. Now that we know our greatest common factor is 3x, we're going to bring that down, open parentheses, 
And we want to figure out if we divide out that 3x in each one of these terms, what is my remaining factor? What am I left with? 3x squared divided by 3x is going to give me just x because the 3's cancel and x squared over x is just x. Negative 6x over 3x is negative 2. The x's here are going to cancel. So my first factor, I have 3x times x minus 2. Let's look at our second group. Our second group is 9x minus 18. What would our greatest common factor in this group be? Notice that we don't have an x in common, so x is not going to be part of the greatest common factor. We do have a 9 in common, so let's put a 9 in the front. If we place a 9 in the front, we must also divide by 9 for each of these terms. So let's bring down our 9 to the next line and open parentheses. Now we're going to do that division again and see what we have for our remaining factor. 9 divided by 9 is going to cancel and just leave me with x. And then I have minus 18 over 9, which is going to give me negative 2 close parentheses, and we still have equals zero. We know we're on the right track, and this is why. If we look inside the parentheses, both of these remaining factors are the same. We have x minus two showing up on the first set and the second set. This tells me that I've done grouping and the greatest common factor part correctly. Now we want to write this in the completely factored form. I like to put the, the common factor here, the x minus 2, in the front. So I'm going to have x minus 2 go first. And then if I was to divide out that x minus 2, what would I have remaining? In the first group, I would have 3x. And in the second group, I would have 9. And this is still going to be equal to 0. Again, because this is factored, and um, this is multiplication, you could write this either way. So you could put the 3x plus 9 first and then the x minus 2 second, um, as long as you kept the signs and the numbers with each factor. Because we're solving this equation, we do need to keep going and set each one of these terms or each one of these factors equal to 0. So now we're going to break this down as x minus 2 equals 0 and then 3x plus 9 equals 0. And then we're going to solve each of these linear equations. Add 2 on both sides for the first one to get x equals 2. And then 3x plus 9 equals 0. We're going to subtract 9 from both sides. That will give us 3x equals negative 9. Divide by 3 x equals negative 3. Our solutions are x equals 2 and negative 3. So the solutions to the equation f of x equals 0, which means setting that function equal to 0, gives us what is called the zeros of the function. So our zeros of this function is 2 and negative 3. Again, you could write this negative 3 comma 2. Order doesn't matter as long as the signs stay with the correct, correct number. The other point that I want to make here is if we were starting to think about this graphically, you could turn this into ordered pairs. My x value for these ordered pairs would be the solutions that I just got to this equation, which would be 2 in the first ordered pair and negative 3 in the second. And the key on this is, I kind of said this at the beginning, the y value is 0. So if I wanted to know the x-intercepts, my x values would be the zeros and the y value would be the value 0. And you could plot these on a graph, and this would be where that function crossed the x-axis. So that was just a little bit more information 
um, than what was asked for, the actual answer to this problem would be two comma negative three. Um, but I do want you to understand how this relates later to graphs. So that was finding the zeros of a quadratic function.